Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This week I'm going to be doing a weekly vlog starting on Tuesday because yesterday we had the Monday off. So it's already after school. I'm gonna show you what I did today and kind of what I have planned for tomorrow and then I'm gonna head home because I am going to go watch Parasites. I don't know if you've seen or heard of that film. It won so many Oscars last night. Monday, I think Monday or Sunday, Sunday. So my mom and I are gonna go watch it at a Korean movie theater. So I'm really excited. It's great to have a Korean film have so many awards. So I'm super, super proud. Just a heads up, this week, next week, it's gonna be super crazy because it's a 40 week and I don't even know. There's just so much stuff going on. Let me show you. I'm also wearing a cowl neck today for the first time and I feel really really suffocated for some reason, but I do feel warm. All right, thank you for watching, bye. All right, today is Tuesday, so we had library and computer lab like normal. I gave some time to do their vocab grid and I jumped into our last topic of math. So they did some problem solving and we did some ordered pairs, graphing, and then they're gonna test, I think, on Thursday. Wednesday, tomorrow will be just review and we are working on their IB, big IB project for this trimester. So they have their whole hour of IB time to work with their groups and then the end of the day is the same. Let me take you over to my calendar that I colored this time so it's nice and pretty. Okay, so here is how our calendar looks for February and these newsletters I got from Learning in Wonderland and they come in so handy in communicating with parents, but pretty much this week is this week. So we have a minimum day tomorrow, plus lunch with loved ones. So our kiddos and families, whoever wants to come, they're gonna have a lunch together, I guess, together out in the playground. So that's gonna happen, and it's minimum day, and we have Spanish that day. So Wednesday is pretty much a review day. Thursday is a normal day. However, we're having an art class. So someone is gonna come and teach our class an art class on Thursday, so we lose some time. And then Friday, I'm not really doing a party. I'm not really doing a party, but I'm just going to give, I don't know, 30 minutes or 45 minutes just to exchange Valentines. If they want to, they don't have to. But I'm also going to bring extra Valentines because sometimes people forget or they didn't have a chance to go buy Valentines and they want to write it out. So I'll just have extra ones. I think I have some Disney Valentines or just some random Valentines I could just have put out to the side. Okay, so this week is all about observation for me, so my mentor is going to come and observe me. There's a lot of student teachers on our campus, so some student teachers are going to come observe me. And I have another observer that wants to come watch me, which I have some mixed thoughts about people coming to observe me. First of all, it's only my second year, so I'm not... I feel that there are so many other great teachers that they can be observing. But at the same time, I also know going through my program, it was really hard to find teachers to observe. So I, my classroom is open. If you wanna come watch me, great. I also need to get comfortable with people coming to watch me because I still get a little nervous, but I wanna to get to the point where if someone's watching me, it doesn't even face me. That's the point I wanna to get to. So I am just going to ask anyone to just come watch me because I just need, I just need to become numb to it. Not numb, but I just need to be used to it. So like I said, today my mentor came and watched my math lesson for the day and let me show you what I did. I just did the same math that I usually do so it wasn't anything fancy, but I will show you. So I occasionally try to spice up my math lessons by including hyperdocs and such and I will link down below a video I did showing how I made my hyperdoc. I made a Naruto themed hyperdoc, but usually we just do notes. I know, nothing fancy, but especially this year, I'm just trying to get some form of consistency and routine going. Next year, I can kind of branch out a little bit. So I just put my objective, vocab, I put steps. It's a little tedious, but it's good for my students to go back and say, okay, what are we doing next? Next, next. Um, Pearson kind of threw ordered pairs and graphing out of nowhere. So I kind of just attached it to this lesson. So it was a lot. Usually I model two problems and instead of calling it input and model, I call it the Miss Chung show to make it a little more engaging. And these are straight up problems from the book. I just changed the name just to make it a little more relevant. So they were essentially having a word problem, creating a table from it with a pattern, creating ordered pairs and 
creating a graph. There's a fly in here. This was my second one. And after I model two, I go into guided practice. And because it's word problems, I actually printed a copy out for the kiddos because writing these, I take forever. Mochi was the star of this word problem. She was organizing two fish tanks. And we kind of went over the ordered pairs, made a graph, and then we did the same one for this one. And then I had a check for understanding. Here is my check for understanding. It, again, same problem from the teacher's guide, but I just changed it to Peppa because my sixth graders are into Peppa Pig for some reason and Shrek. So I had them do this on their own to check for understanding and they made a table, ordered pairs, graph, and then I had them do a digital quick check on Pearson. One thing I finally got done is I finally found my IB profiles or learner profiles in my storage somewhere when I was moving classrooms. So I finally put that up. I am not a fan of this screen, but you know, we are working with what we got. And I did not make these, they're from Carly Lomax. In other news, I finally got my February calendar up and I finished posting my jobs, which are right there for the new month. And what I need to do is just put the schedule down for tomorrow and then I'll be good to go. My mom and I are gonna try to catch the 7.30 showing of Parasite. Uh, so I'm kind of scared. I don't know, I haven't watched the trailer, so I don't know if it's, I heard it's a thriller, but I don't know if it's going to be like a scary movie because at night, at night it might get a little scary. If you've watched Parasite, comment down below if you liked it and if you thought it was scary. And I'll probably watch it by the time this video is uploaded and I'll let you know how I liked it. All right, so I am going to write down my schedule and clean up my desk a little bit because it's a little messy and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. to stay afloat it's nice be a person you don't want can somebody save me other thing going to do going to do Hi everyone, happy Wednesday. It's already the end of the school day, so I'm just going to quickly share with you what we did today, what I have planned for tomorrow, and uh, yeah, we'll end it like that. All right, so yesterday I told everyone I was going to watch Parasites, and my mom and I went to the source yesterday. And if you live in the OC area, it's by Knott's Berry Farm, and it's like a new, I think it's Korean-owned building with a lot of shops, restaurants, and there's a CGV. I think it's like a Korean movie theater. So my mom and I watched Parasite, and it was really good. They gave us free popcorn, which was really nice. But it was such a good movie. I loved it. It. I don't really like scary, scary movies, but it was a thriller, and it was pretty dark but it had some really good elements to it. So I totally understand why it won all those awards. And it also made me proud to be Korean, to see some Korean representation in our cinema. And I'm really mad at myself because I brought leftover popcorn. I brought leftover popcorn from yesterday and they have the best popcorn flavors. They have caramel, my favorite is the onion and sour cream, or it's the onion popcorn and the spicy chicken, which is so good. And so I didn't even get to eat my popcorn. Today was so busy. I also got a Starbucks sandwich and I didn't get a chance to eat it. Sometimes the day goes by so fast and there's so many things to do that I don't really have a chance to sit down and eat but pretty much, I already changed the schedule for tomorrow, but let me show you what we did. Today was lunch with loved ones, so lunch was longer than usual, and families came and they kind of, they brought tents and blankets, and they brought food, so they were kind of just spending time with the family for a good while, and it was minimum day, so literally after lunch, they went home. So all we had to do today was math review, ELA notes, and new spelling. And then, oh, we had Spanish today, so it was a really short day. Let me show you what we have going on tomorrow. 
Okay. I think we'll only have time in the morning to go over our homework. And I don't know why I made it for such a long block, but I don't think it'll take that long. And the rest of the time, I want everyone to have enough time to do the math test. We're going to be testing on topic three. So after recess, I want to go into science, but if we finish our math test early, I'm going to start science early. So our PTA is going to come in and do an art lesson with my class and their block of time that I signed up for was 11.20 to 12.20. So if we finish our math test early, that would be perfect. After lunch, we're going to do just the same silent reading. They're going to have their IV time and go home. Also, my observer came this morning and she is so sweet. I was a little nervous, but when she came, it was just like normal. So I'm getting used to it, which is good. I don't have anything too crazy for you other than watch Parasite if you haven't. It's in Korean, so there's subtitles, but I watch all my movies with subtitles anyway. So if you've watched Parasite, let me know if you liked it down below. I loved it. I would watch it again. I'm gonna take Rudy to go see it, and then I think I wanna take my sister to go see it too. All right, so I'm gonna clean my desk a little bit, pack up, and then head home for the day. So I will see everyone tomorrow. Bye. My library rug is looking so sad. It was so pretty the first year I got it, but now it's, it never lies straight anymore. So I really want a new rug because I don't think anyone wants to sit on this. My dream was to have a really inviting, cozy library. So I kind of want to close this off with a really small bookshelf. This is, this is me speaking into the future. So I have this little cozy area. That means I would have to have a bigger rug because it looks like a beach towel. Ooh, no battery, why? Happy Thursday, almost Friday, Valentine's Day. I'm not sure if my sixth graders are going to be into the whole passing out Valentines. But like last year, my third graders, they all brought little cards for everybody and we did a whole exchange. We'll see if the older kids are into it. I told my class that they wanted to, they can bring Valentines, but they don't have to. All right, I am so tired and let me sit down. Ooh, today I was really tired and part of the reason is I think in the morning when my eye waters, it picks up some of my eyeliner or whatever. It just went on my contacts and it just clouded my vision, especially just my right eye. So the whole day I was blinking and for some reason it just made me more tired. Like I couldn't, oh, I think because I kept blinking and it was hard to keep my eyes open because it was blurry and maybe my body thought it was time to sleep. So that's probably it. Usually I just get my contact solution and just take off the makeup, but I didn't have it with me. So it was a struggle. It was a struggle. Today was a pretty chill day. I had to change the schedule when I came in because I forgot. I knew I was forgetting something. Thursday mornings we have PE so I had to put that block in the morning so we did PE and then sorry I'm looking at my schedule on the board we had PE then we reviewed all our homework and we started our math test at around 10 o'clock and I don't think anyone finished by recess it was only 25 minutes or 20 minutes of testing time after recess I gave them time to finish their math test and at 11 20 we had our art lesson so our, I don't know what the group is called, but our PTA had volunteers come in and teach our students an art lesson. And I'll try to include some clips of the art on the board or the inspiration and them working on their art pieces. But pretty much this is, I don't know, my student asked if I can join in. So I said, why not? So it was pretty much a self portrait and then all of their favorite things, uh, challenges that they like to do, their favorite subject on that one brain. Hey! Hello again. I had to cut it because someone came in and we had a nice conversation, but now it's almost four o'clock. It's almost four o'clock. I need to leave by, I want to, 4.30. I am going to leave by 4.30, but there are just a couple things I need to do before then. I'm going to write the schedule. I need to prep some science materials because I want to teach science tomorrow. It's been way too long. And then I need to clean this mess of a desk. So, let me show you what we're doing tomorrow. Here we go. Ooh, 
Another cool tip is you can attach a bell of some sort to your whiteboard marker. So when you're giving people points, you can just pick it up. You don't even need to tell your class that you're giving table points. I'll just hear the bell and go for it. Okay, let me get my planner. Tomorrow, our IB time for their IB project, they are grouped together. So all of the sixth grade students are grouped together. So they are each given a grade level and classroom and they need to teach a lesson to that grade level, whatever they got about social media awareness, and all of their lessons are from Common Sense Media. So they've been working on that at the tail end of the day. Uh, let's see, however, tomorrow, because it's Valentine's Day, just in case anyone has any uh, celebrations or parties, we are leaving the end of the day block free. And we are going to do ID 1040 to 1145. Okay, so, let's see. Okay, so we're gonna do IB time and that's, that, I can actually put my science in there. Oh, let's see. All right, so tomorrow we're going to finish our math test and my wonders curriculum, our ELA, I'm splitting into two weeks, so we're not testing tomorrow. I think we should start science. Okay, so I want to do a water cycle. I want to continue science. Right there, and then 110 to two, I can, oh, I need to think of something. I have no idea, let's see. All right, so I can probably change it if anything else comes to mind, but for now, we're gonna go over our homework. We're gonna finish our math test start science, IV time, science continued, and then finish their art pieces that they started on. Let me try them. So they're still working on their art piece um, in a Valentine exchange. And I think I'm gonna give them some time to make a little card for their buddies because their buddies teacher told me that the buddies are making little valentine cards for my class so they feel bad because we didn't really think of anything so I'll probably give them some time to do that all right all right so my schedule is written on the board I need to prep some things for our science lesson tomorrow and I'm gonna head home so uh let me show you what I need to do also also, I ordered 10 white books and they came in. If you don't know what I mean about white books, just look at my previous video. I talk about how I saw the white books at the Q conference and I really wanted them. So, <laughs> exciting stuff. Okay, here we go. During the student's IV time, I kind of pulled all the science materials we'll need for tomorrow. I actually need to buy a plant. All right, so we're focusing on the water cycle. So we are essentially making a pond. We're using stem scopes, by the way. It's brand new for us. So basically, they're going to put water in a Ziploc, put some blue dye in it, sand to represent a pond. I have the sand up there. And we're going to be putting heat on it to see what the water does. And these, Ah, these are pretty intense and I just kind of they come without the light bulb so I was assembling them but check it out okay. Ah! okay but check it out I'm gonna put this here I'm gonna plug it in oh oh well, that that wasn't So, ooh, it's a really bright light, and this is just gonna go on top of the pond water, or fake pond, I guess. So this is gonna go on the fake pond. Basically, if I didn't make any sense, which I probably didn't. 
I need to assemble all of the lamps. I have the lamp shades here. My light bulbs are in there. I don't think it comes with plastic bags. I might need to buy zip, oh no, I have Ziplocs here. Okay. And then we have these little, oh God, what are these called? To gauge water. And then I have my sand right here. So let's start with this. know how much I'm going to need because when the kids make their own ponds they can just put multiple ones at one lamp it's, it doesn't have to be one group gets one lamp you know so I think I should probably figure out how many groups I want to make first so if I'm thinking out loud I have 32 students and I want groups of four Eight groups. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hmm. I think I can have two groups at a time. So two, four, six, eight, two, four, six. I think it's fine. I think four is good enough. What do you think? So I'm just going to be making four of these because I think because. We're just putting Ziplocs underneath. So we can do two groups at a time. That way we can just have four. And I can just save these for later. So I'll pack these guys back up. Some other things I need, I need some zip locks. So let's look in here. Um, okay. These would definitely work for the pond, but I just need, I just need eight. Eight. All right, so. Let me put this in with the rest of the supplies. I want to be ready because with a lot of our hands-on activities, if I'm doing things the minute before, I'm going to get really flustered and anxious. So we have the lamps for the ponds. We have the Ziploc. I'm going to need a sand station because I do not want this bag of sand on the floor. So I can even put the bag, the bag, I can even put the bag of sand outside and have groups make their little pond. I have my blue dye. I think that's it. I think we're good. Yeah, I just need to buy a plant. So I'm going to go to Target tonight because I need to buy Valentine's for my kids. And I also didn't get Rudy anything for Valentine's Day. So I need to go to Target and see if there's anything there. Valentine's Day just came out of nowhere. So I'm gonna go home, I'm gonna go to Target, but other than that, I think we're good to go. So I will see you guys tomorrow, bye. Welcome back. It's already Friday and the day is over. Thank goodness. But happy Valentine's Day to everyone. I am so happy it is Friday. So I totally erased my schedule. But I really want to show you what we did today because we did science and we started on the water cycle. So I really want to go over what we did and kind of show you pretty much our science experiment. All right, so my goal is to show you our science experiment today clean up after my science experiment because I should have had my students do it but we had to it was just one thing after another we didn't have time to clean up so I will do it and I need to clean my hot mess of a desk really embarrassing but 
uh, that's pretty much what I need to do. Science, clean science, clean desk, respond to journals, and head home for the day. Really quick, I wanted to share with you what I got for my team teachers. I got them a little candy and a little pencil chocolate. In the front, I wrote, pencils are number two, but you're number one. All right, so here is the current state of my desk. My students were super sweet into giving me little candies, so I got some macarons. I got this bracelet. Uh, chocolates, big chocolate. And I was smelling this rose all day. It smells so good. Let me go over what we did for science today. So we are learning about the water cycle and this is kind of the student book, which is really thick for some reason. So just a quick overview of what we did for science. We started on the water cycle and a lot of my students remembered bits and pieces from previous years but because of the whole NGSS change, it's gonna be a little different until the grades catch up with one another, so they might have already learned this. But we started with our investigative phenomena, so how does water cycle through Earth's systems, and we wanted to brainstorm before instruction, during instruction, and after instruction what they believe, and we kind of go back and forth, and they wrote a whole lot more than I did. So first we brainstormed the different cycles that they can think of. So they came up with life cycle, food chain, and we finally got to the understanding that cycles loop around, once it ends, it begins again, and they rely on each other to continue the cycle. Then we started with my teacher experiment where we had a plant. I pretty much had to put a bag over one of the leaves to kind of symbolize a closed system and place this heat lamp on top of it. Acting as the sun, we did some observations in the beginning, the plant looked normal, and as time went on, you started seeing some evaporation, some condensation on the plastic. And once you turned off the light, the water droplets got really big and started kind of falling down the sides, if you will, kind of signifying or symbolizing precipitation or showing precipitation. We started on our second observation, which was their turn. So they kind of made a pond with a Ziploc, sand, and water and we did the same light on them and they were able to make some observations. We didn't get a chance to finish these questions because we had ID today and we had to meet with our buddies to exchange cards. So we'll go over this next week. But let me show you really quick. Their ponds came out really, really cool. So here's an example. So I set up some pond stations. I had one right here. I had one right here, and I had one right here. So for example, these are kind of staying here, but you can tell this is the sand. We put some blue food coloring to show that it's water, and you can see the droplets on the side, and they're already starting to fall down. So I told my kids to kind of rub back together, and then you can see it's starting to drip down. Let me try to find one that hasn't really been tampered with. Okay this one for example so you can see it kind of drip down if I keep touching it there we go so they were able to see the full water cycle in their little ponds super cool right so there we go so they were able to see the water evaporate then their condensation on the sides of the wall and then precipitation showing the water cycle and with my plants, they were able to see transpiration where it evaporates from the leaves of the plant. So I thought it was a great way to introduce vocabulary. So I had them write their vocabulary on the side and I went, I told them to go back to their observations. And when they say water droplets forming on the side, I told them what kind of vocab word can we replace with water droplets on the side or some were dripping down. What vocab word can we replace with that i love ngss or the 5e model because they're exploring and they're making observations and descriptions and then when you explain they have those words to fit in with their explanations 
So when they're saying water droplets on the side, I ask them what word can we replace it with and they say condensation or water droplets dropping down. I can say what vocab word can you use instead and then they use precipitation. I love science experiments, I love doing hands-on, but it takes forever to get everything set up. So that's when you call on your teacher's assistants and any student that is done and wants to help. I had two of my students, here's my sand, let me show you my sand. I had two of my amazing students make eight bags of these, or I guess sandbags, and then one materials person from a group came in and put, I think, 60 milliliters of water into the bag. Some food coloring to make it blue to show that it's water. I put too much sand in there, so they actually had to add a lot more water because the sand was absorbing all of it. All right, so it is 3.20 right now. My goal is to finish cleaning by 3.30 so I can get out of here. So wish me luck, bye. It is 3.40, but I got a majority of the things I wanted to do done. So I'm going to go home and enjoy my Valentine's Day with Rudy. I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my videos. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!